going on, guys? Right on. Thanks for coming out. So, uh, you know, I live in Las Vegas, been out here for 30 years, and uh, my favorite part is the out-of-towners, you know? They get into Las Vegas Boulevard, and their minds are blown. They say, oh, castles and fountains and yard-long margaritas? This place is crazy. Vegas, yeah! <laughs> it's adorable. But we see the same thing every goddamn day, so the shine has worn off. But if we go to the Midwest, bam, I'm now the tourist. I'm a wow! <laughs> Is that a squirrel? <laughs> that woman's wearing a skirt, and I can't see her asshole. This is weird. <laughs> Bars closed. This place is crazy. Ohio. Yeah. You know, and Vegas ain't the only place that relies on tourism, right? There's Hawaii, you know. And Hawaii's beautiful, but they never show you this on the brochure. Hawaii has also got a gigantic homeless problem. Oh my God. It, the homeless is now the official state bird of Hawaii. It's crazy, you know what I mean? But the tourism committee, they stepped in, they wanted to do something about it. But instead of actually coming up with like a program or something, their idea was to, was to walk up to every homeless person and give them a one-way plane ticket back to the continental United States. <laughs> And the only question I have is, is what homeless person in his right mind would ever take him up on that offer? Because if you ever find yourself homeless in Hawaii, you have reached the top of your profession. I mean, it does not get any better than that, man. I'm sorry. You're a CEO. Congratulations. The point that I'm trying to make is being homeless in Hawaii is a thousand times better than having a home in Detroit. You know what I mean? I mean, come on, guys cold out there. <laughs> Vegas, though. I'll tell you this, my favorite part about Las Vegas is the fact that we get these residencies, you know? We get the greatest bands in the world. They'll be here for like months on end. You know, back in January, we ended up getting Aerosmith. I love Aerosmith. But here's the thing, when you get a residency, it's on the downturn of their <laughs> career, man. Steven Tyler is 76 years old. <laughs> He's gonna be up on stage going, Whoa! But then it got me thinking, like, what's gonna happen when today's rock star is 76 years old? And there's only one. She walks the walk, she talks the talk. It's Cardi B. Oh God, I love Cardi B. But she has got lyrics that can make the Wu-Tang Clan blush. I'm telling you, man, like, she's got a lyric, and if you know it, sing along with me. I want a gag. I want a choke. I want you to hit that dangly thing in the back of my throat, yeah. There were some ladies singing along with that. <laughs> and to those ladies, I just want to say, I hope you get to see your kids, because I know you don't have custody. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, that is, a, that is an every other weekend mom type of thing. You know what I mean? They're not covering that song on Kids Bop. Let's be honest with ourselves here. But the thing is, though, is it got me thinking, like, Cardi B's so hardcore, you know? And what's going to happen when she's 76 years old? She's got a song called Wet Ass Pussy. Wet ass. Could you imagine her singing that song at 76 years old? People in the audience are going to be like, Cardi, the only way that thing is still wet is if it's in a diaper. Take it easy, Cardi. Come on. His lips are chapped. Let's get that pussy some Burt's Beeswax, Cardi. Come on, baby. We got... Right on the taping. Oh, man. But, you know, and I'll tell you this, I am over the internet, too. I don't like the internet, you know, because all the smart people are bought and paid for, and you see it in the advertisements. Like, I saw this advertisement online. It was for a mattress company, and it said, uh, this is, it said, scientists claim that if you get a full night's sleep, that will have the same effect on your brain as does winning the lottery. <laughs> no. I've never won the lottery, but I have gotten eight hours of sleep before. And not one time have I ever woke up, was like, I need to tell my boss to go fuck himself. I mean, oh my God, I feel great. But there's this, there's this fascination with vanity online, you know, and ladies, you're the biggest culprits of this. Look, I understand if you're snapping a picture of yourself, you want to capture the moment, I'm fine with that. But some of you are posting these overtly sexualized photos, borderline pornographic, which I would normally have no problem with. But these same models still feel compelled to throw in an inspirational message in the same pic. Have you seen this confusing shit? They'll be on Instagram. Going, oh. <laughs> Chase your dreams. Like, what? <laughs> I am going to go back to school. Thanks, titties. You know what I mean? Like, 
Like I saw this one chick, she posted this video of herself twerking on her bed and yeah, the booty was a clapping. <laughs> and the quote that she put was, you can buy a whore, but you gotta earn a queen. You know, I'm looking at this chick's bedroom and I'm like, uh, queens have a box spring for their mattress, okay? Like, let's, let's get that credit score up, Khaleesi. What do you say? <laughs> married, been married for a long time, you know? And here's the thing, after you've been married for a while, you gotta find new ways to spice it up in the bedroom, you know? My wife, she's like, look, I want you to be a dirty doctor. I'll be the naughty patient. I was like, ooh, I hope you got insurance, bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I was ready. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> so the time has come. She's laid out of the bed, just looking delicious, and walks Dr. Gooch. <laughs> Stark ass naked, holding a clipboard. <laughs> My God. Ah, so Mrs. Han, I'm just going over your chart right here, and it says you got a serious disease. So I'm gonna go ahead and write you a prescription for penicillin. <laughs> and she's all, uh, well, I'm gonna need a second opinion. The hell does that mean? She's like, you said it was serious. That's what I would say. I'm like, I am not a real doctor. You know that. You know that. We wouldn't be banging on a futon if I was. <laughs> you know, it's great. I love my wife. And I love her so much, especially when I compare it to my ex. You know, here's the thing, like... Yeah, Look, I, I got a divorce under my belt, man. And me and this woman, we, we didn't like anything together. You know, like she was into hair and makeup, you know? And like, she talks so much about it that I think I could do it now, ladies. Like, if you give me a brush, I think I could do it. I know how you get them cheekbones popping. I know how you do the cat eyes. I know how you do the smoky eyes. And when you do it wrong, I fucking notice. Oh my God. Like, I can't even watch porn without going, oh, fix your roots, bitch, really? I mean, come on, how am I supposed to? You know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, after the divorce, you know, you find yourself, you know, if you've ever been divorced, you know, you know, there's this moment where you don't feel loved, you feel kind of worthless, you start doing some things that are a little out of character. And there was like a couple of months where I was just watching way too much porn. I was so sad, you know what I mean? And the thing is, is I was, <laughs> I was watching for the plot. That's when you know you got real problems, you know? I was like, what? Bridget got an F on her report card. Well, how's she going to get out of this pickle? You know? Because now when I watch porn, I watch porn for the comedic value. And if you're watching porn for something funny, you will never be let down. <laughs> like I was watching this scene, this chick, she was getting it. She kept yelling out the same line. She's like, oh yeah, you like that little cookie daddy, don't you? Oh, you like the cookie daddy? Oh, we'll come and get the cookie. And I'm like, if I'm the male performer in that scene, what's stopping me from going, oh yeah, me like cookie? <laughs> Give daddy that cookie. Mm. Nom, 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 Comedy. Comedy's hard, man. Comedy's hard. You know who's got it hard in comedy? Women. Women have it hard in comedy because their male counterparts think they're being funny at inopportune times and they're just being dicks, you know? Like, for example, I got a friend of mine, she's a comic here in town and she's very funny. She's getting ready to jump up on stage and this is how the male comic brings her up. He's like, your next comic coming to the stage, mm. I ain't gonna lie. She got some big ass titties. Yeah. Brings my friend up on stage. She crushes, does her job. The very next day, her and I are having lunch and she's venting to me. She's mad, you know. She's like, I can't believe you would do that to me. You don't sexualize me. She, you treat me with the respect a comedian deserves. She goes, how would you like it, Gooch? How would you like it if somebody brought you up on stage by going, oh, your next comic coming to the stage has got the juiciest dick in the game. I would love that. Are you kidding me? Like, bring me up like that every single time. I'll never bomb again, okay? It doesn't matter if the front row is laughing or not. I'll simply pull vote over them with my giant cock. <laughs> on my way to the manager's office, why well, I will collect the check. <laughs> but with comedy, though, comedy's a life of peaks and valleys, you know? Like, right now, uh, you know, I'm here at the Las Vegas Arts, and, and you guys are an amazing audience. You're here for the live comedy. I love it. But you gotta understand something. Next week, I'm not here. Next week, I'm booked at the scariest coffee shop in North Vegas, and <laughs> my only audience is four tweakers, like, give me all your copper. 
I love Kid Rock. <laughs> and the thing is, though, the reason why I bring this up is you never know what you're going to expect, you know? And, and like, especially when you do these bar shows, you know? Like, for example, like maybe six years ago, I was doing this bar show and I was killing, you know, obviously. And, uh, <laughs> and the audience that night, were, they were primarily black. Now, the reason why I bring that up is the second I get off stage, the one and only other white dude in the whole joint decides to walk up to me and break protocol. He walks up, he's like, hey, man, <laughs> you were great. You know, I was thinking, us white boys, we got to stick together, huh? High five. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, <laughs> we only talk like that in prison, Chad. Put your fucking hand down right now. And I know what you guys are thinking. Well, Gooch, you are kind of skinny. If you were in prison, would you join an Aryan gang for protection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's not something I want to say out loud, because one thing you can't tell by looking at me, if there's one thing on this planet that I hate, you guys, I hate racists. Like, ooh, I hate racists. <laughs> but I hate being raped more, you know what I mean? Like, so much more. And if I have to lie about being a racist for four or five years just so I can avoid a one-way trip to Pound Town, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because on the outside of prison, guys, I'm not a bad-looking guy, maybe a six or a seven. Some people say I look like Tom Brady with AIDS. I'll take it. I'll take it. But inside prison, this right here is the body that brings all the boys to the yard. So... I already know how it would end. I'd be up in the prison yard throwing up plates of 10, just, ah. <laughs> And that's when some monster walks up to me, hey, fish, suck my dick and I'll give you a pack of cigarettes. That's when I go, ah, 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 ah. You can buy a whore. <laughs> but you gotta earn a queen. <laughs> you guys been great, take care. I used to have really bad eating disorders, and I kind of wish I looked like it more. <laughs> it's a struggle that I still battle with. Like, a few weeks ago, I got food poisoning, and, and food poisoning is so miserable. Like, you can't eat, and everything's coming out of you. But when you're a woman and you get food poisoning, there's this little voice in the back of your head going, this is good. <laughs> you wanted to lose a few pounds, didn't you? <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> like, thanks, Mom. <laughs> I have this other disorder called liking men. Liking men is so embarrassing. <laughs> I feel like all my friends in their 20s are all out on the streets like, men are trash, and I'm over here like, I eat from the trash. <laughs> I, I love the trash. <laughs> I've tried not to though. Um, recently, I tried going through some sort of gay awakening where I was dating girls and kissing girls and and then there was this one night I was cuddling with this other experimental woman. And as we were laying there, I realized we were both very iron deficient. <laughs> and then as things proceeded, she stuck her very cold finger inside me and I was like, ah, I'm straight, I'm straight. I love, I love Dick. Men are warm and that's all you have to offer us. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm very attracted to men who look like they're drug dealers. <laughs> Something about a malnourished guy with a neck tattoo. I'm like, yes! <laughs> I think it's because when I was in high school, I, I did date a drug dealer. I was in high school, he was not in high school. <laughs> 
He bought me an El Camino for my 18th birthday. Which I feel like was a really good trade-off for my virginity. <laughs> I'm, going through, I'm going through a really transitional period in my life. Uh, a year ago, I moved out of my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. And I moved to a really scary place called Los Angeles, California. <laughs> I moved all alone into a studio apartment, and the number one thing I wanted to do moving to a new city was make new friends, specifically girlfriends. And it's been quite the challenge because I don't enjoy hiking or cocaine. <laughs> Those are the two main recreational activities out there. And I don't wanna wake up at 6 a.m. and climb a mountain, that's for lesbians. <laughs> I go to a lot of coffee shops because I'm unemployed. That's where, that's where un unemployed people hang out. And I've noticed this, that I just want to know, why do so many cunts work at coffee shops? <laughs> it's always a hot cunt with a septum, and why does she make the best lattes? <laughs> I really want to know. Uh, I was at the mall the other day observing teenagers Fucking weirdos. <laughs> and I had to remind myself that I was once the weirdo teenager. Like, my generation, we had access to the early unfiltered internet. And we would do this thing when we were 13 years old. We would go on someone's dad's computer and we would log on to this website called Omegle. And, and if you don't know what Omegle was, Omegle was this website where you could video chat with any random person around the world. And the whole demographic of this website was 13-year-old girls and Indian penises. <laughs> That's what we did before TikTok, guys. Um, I... A lot of people, a lot of people think it's weird for men to have cats. Any, any cat daddies in here? Woo! They think it's on man. I don't think it's weird for men to have cats as long as like your sister died and you have to take care of it. <laughs> no, I, I think it's great. Whenever I see a guy with a cat, I'm like, he does not hit women. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> I have a cat, his name is Gus, and he's my baby boy. Um, and uh, something, they don't, something you don't learn until you're an adult is whenever you're trying to have intimate time with your partner, cats very much want to be involved. <laughs> you have to go through this, I live in a studio apartment, so I have to go through this awkward period of picking up the cat and putting him in the bathroom. And then he's crying, so I have to play music over him. It's, and I've learned to do that because I have a black cat in a very dark apartment. And has anyone else ever had to wash cum out of their animal? <laughs> I feel like I unlocked like a new level of horror. I, I travel a lot, and I've been to a lot of places in America, and I've just decided that I hate the city of Philadelphia. Yeah. I, I can't put my finger on what's wrong with that place. Um, something about Philadelphia. And last time I was in Philadelphia, I did a show, and I, I made the unfortunate mistake of hooking up with a comedian. And as this guy was leaving my hotel room, he gave me a fist bump. And my first immediate thought was, I should go get tested. <laughs> so I went to go get tested right next to a Wawa. <laughs> Can't say I hate Wawa. Another place I hate, uh, Walmart. Any Walmart haters in here? <laughs> Have you ever walked into Walmart and thought, I should make more money? No. <laughs> it's time. 
My favorite thing about Walmart is I'm always the hottest person inside Walmart. <laughs> like, I'm a six in Target, but I'm a nine in Walmart. <laughs> a 10 if you go to the one on the east side. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever had a stare off with a baby in line at a grocery store? while buying a pregnancy test. <laughs> I had a stare off with this baby the other night and I was staring at him and realized I'm more afraid of giving birth than dying. <laughs> it's scary. I hate, I hate pregnancy test commercials. They all feel the same. It's always a blonde woman with a ring on her finger hoping for a plus sign. I wish they were just a little bit moralistic, like, like a bunch of 16-year-old girls in a McDonald's bathroom. <laughs> they all got McNuggets and go back to the skate park. <laughs> Stacy's pregnant, so we all go back to Stacy's house and take turns pushing her down the stairs. <laughs> That's what we would call an east side abortion. <laughs> uh, this past Super Bowl Sunday, I went to the grocery store on the morning of Super Bowl Sunday. And there were all these women there getting excited and buying snacks with their chief shirts on, of course. And I don't know why I just started to hate these women. And I really was trying, I went back in my car and I was analyzing, why do I hate these women? And I think I just realized I'm very jealous of women who like football because I feel like that means your father loved you. <laughs> um, as a white woman who does comedy, I'm obligated to talk to you guys about therapy. Um, I've, I've battled with depression my whole life and a therapy has really helped me. I have an amazing therapist, and she always tells me that I should try to be more thankful for the things that I have and focus less on the things that I don't have. So when I get depressed, I like to sit in my car and watch poor people chase the bus. <laughs> on Boulder Highway. Um, I'm very grateful for comedy. I've learned so many things doing this. And I think the most important thing I've learned recently is that Ron Jeremy was not a politician. <laughs> you guys have been an amazing crowd. Thank you so much. Yes, I love to wear wild shirts. Woo! <laughs> I don't ever pay attention to what I'm wearing half the time. It's just if it's fun, I'm wearing it. And uh, one time I had a shirt that had a bunch of upside down pineapples all over it. I recently learned that that means you're a swinger looking to go swinging. I wore that shirt for three years. <laughs> Nobody asked me to go swinging. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'm a country radio DJ. Woo! It's a pretty easy job. The hardest part is when people call in to request songs and they don't know the title or who sings it. <laughs> <laughs> There's like, it's about Jesus, it's about whiskey, it's about beer, it's about mama, it's about girls, it's about America. That's all of them, okay? 
But I imagine it's way easier than being a death metal DJ. I think that would be hard. Thank you for calling Death Metal 92.5. What would you like to hear? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I don't know what it's called or who thinks it. But it goes... <laughs> That's St. Zanus with Daddy's Little Girl. <laughs> I'm the mountain's new metal leader. <laughs> My favorite thing about radio are radio commercials. I love how much energy they have. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And they carry that energy over to commercials for like businesses going out of business. Those commercials, they always sound way too happy to be going out of business. They're just like, this weekend, whoa! We did it! We mismanaged our funds! Whoa! Yes, everything must go! No financing for five years! We can't afford it either! Whoa! <laughs> Free hot dogs, bouncy house for the kids! My kids won't talk to me! Whoa! <laughs> I, I always wonder how many takes did it take them to get so excited? that they're going out of business. I always wish I could have been in the sound booth for the first few takes, you know, where he's just coming to grips with the reality that his world is crumbling around him. They're like, going out business commercial, take one. <laughs> We're going out of business. <laughs> Cut! We need more energy. Get excited. You're going out of business. <gasps> I, never, I never looked at it that way before. All right, next commercial, more energy. Ready? Going out of business, take two. <laughs> We're going out of business. <laughs> This business has been in my family for 78 years. I've been in church for five months. Wow! Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I live in a small mountain town in Arizona called Sholo, Arizona. There ain't no party like a Sholo party because a Sholo party's done by eight. A lot of old people there. Uh, I love living in a small town. The thing that sucks is you don't ever get the big bands coming through our town. At best, we get the tribute bands. We don't get the red hot chili peppers. We get the red not chili peppers. They almost give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. We don't get George straight. We get George not so straight. We don't get Green Day. We get a Spanish Green Day tribute band called Dia de los Verdes. <laughs> they play their hit song, Idiote de Americana. It's good. And then they have a Spanish corn tribute band open up for them called Elote. <laughs> it's mucho excelente. <laughs> and my small mountain town, everyone there loves to hunt. And they love to fish. And they all think I'm gay. <laughs> everyone up there's like, dude, you're gay. And I'm like, I don't think so. I'm married and I have two kids. And they're like, no, dude, you're gay. You just don't know it yet. I'm 43 years old. When am I gonna find out? I feel like if you're gonna find out you're gay, you want it to be in your 20s and 30s when it's all coming at you. If I find out I'm gay now, I'm just a middle-aged single gay dude that loves to garden. That's not sexy. 
Not only when am I gonna find out I'm gay, where? <laughs> I hope it's home, alone. Maybe I'm watching The Bachelor. <laughs> I guess it's good. He is yummy, I'm gay! All right, I'm home alone. That would be all right. The wor I think it would suck to find out, like the worst way to find out I'm gay is like maybe when I'm walking one of my daughters down the aisle. Like, honey, you look so beautiful. But your husband looks yummy. I'm gay, I'm gay. I ruined my daughter's day, no. That would suck. The worst way would be to find out on my deathbed. When I'm like 96 and all my family's gathered around. Thank you all for coming. I want you all to know I love you very much. I don't want anyone to be sad. I'm going to a better place. But before I go, my male nurse is yummy, I'm gay! <laughs> That would suck. <laughs> People always think I'm gay because I'm a little flamboyant. Are gay people the only ones allowed to be flamboyant? Have you ever tried being flamboyant? It's amazing! <laughs> you should try it. <laughs> In my mountain town, they all think, they're like, you just seem gay because you don't like to hunt. It's not manly. It's like, first of all, I don't think hunting is manly. Have you ever hunted? If you're hunting like the male species, say like the male elk, the bull elk, you know how you get the male elk? By pretending to be a woman elk. They squirt themselves with women's pee, not manly. And then they have a little like elk call whistle and then they blow into it and it goes, I want some elk dick. <laughs> and then the elk's like, what? I got some elk dick. <laughs> Hunting is just catfishing animals. That's all it is. <laughs> I'm a sexy female elk looking ready to go to pound town. <laughs> just kidding, my name's Bill. <laughs> and you're going on my wall, bitch! <laughs> I'm trying to be manlier. I told my friend, I'm like, maybe I'd be manly if I started vaping. <laughs> and he's like, vaping is not manly. And I started to think about it. I'm like, you know what, you're right. Because if vaping was manly, they would have had the Marlboro Man as their spokesperson years ago. But they'd never do that because it would sound like this. After a long day on the rain, wrestling cattle, I like to relax with a nice draw of... Strawberry Gummy Patch Bear Supreme! <laughs> Not manly! <laughs> uh, I have daughters, and they say that daughters end up marrying men like their fathers. So I wouldn't be surprised if both my daughters ended up marrying butch lesbians. <laughs> Hello, sir. My name is Rebecca. I love vodka soda football, romantic comedies, and your daughter. <laughs> Just like her father. <laughs> My oldest, when she was five years old, for her birthday, she wanted summertime Barbie. 
So I went to the toy store to get her summertime Barbie. And when I got there, all they had were black summertime Barbies. And I was like, crap. I'm going to have to ask for white summertime Barbie. And they're going to think I'm racist. And I turn around and this lady's like, can I help you? And she was black. And I was like, ah! And I was like, yeah, do you want? Do you have a white one? And she's like, why, are you racist? And I'm like, no, 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 I love Black Summertime Barbie. She's my favorite. My daughter's racist. <laughs> I don't know. My body does weird stuff. I got married when I was 19. Woo! which means I've been divorced. Woo! <laughs> Everybody always asks, why'd you get married so young? And I tell them, it's because I found a woman that wanted to have sex with me. And I didn't know if that would happen again. <laughs> so I don't know if you played blackjack before, but I was like, I'll stay, I'll stay. You don't hit on 19, ever. <laughs> Married at 19, divorced at 33. Two years later, I remarried the same woman. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that usually has two responses. People that have never been divorced are usually like, <gasps> That's so romantic. <laughs> True love does exist. <laughs> and then you have people that have been divorced and they're like, are you crazy? <laughs> you were out. <laughs> One guy came up to me after the show and goes, dude, you reheated the McDonald's? <laughs> Did you just call my wife McDonald's? Because I'm loving it. <laughs> when we got remarried, we didn't register for gifts. I don't think when you get remarried, you should ever be allowed to register for gifts. Your life's going great. You found someone that wants to love you in sickness and in health. And you're like, yeah, but I also want a hot dog toaster. <laughs> no! The only people that should be allowed to register for gifts are people whose lives are going incredibly wrong. It's like, hey guys, it's me, Steve. I just, I just lost my job and uh, my wife just left me. But I'm registered a Crate and Barrel. I could really use some cups. Uh, she took them all. <laughs> One time I messed up, instead of Crate and Barrel, I said Cracker Barrel. And if you register for your wedding at Cracker Barrel, I'll get you whatever you want. <laughs> True. My wife has big boobs. Woo! And she likes to wear my t-shirts to bed at night. And she ends up boobing them out. <sighs> and normally I'd be pissed but now they fit so much better. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no more Chafee. Chafee. My wife's also the farter in the relationship. <laughs> She's not here. <laughs> she said I could talk about it. Uh, she's the farter. Her farts don't make any noise. They're just silent but deadly. So whenever she farts, I always ask her, did you just fart? And then she always gets mad. And she's like, why do you always need to know if I just farted? And I'm like, because if you did not just fart, we got to get out of here now! Get down! Call the police! Call the gas company! I need a new priest and an old priest! 
Okay, I farted, you idiot. Uh, my wife and I recently went to a sex shop. <laughs> we went to a sex shop and they had amazing customer service at the sex shop. And you know where I don't want amazing customer service? The sex shop! If I can't find what I'm looking for, I'm leaving. You don't have to pay someone minimum wage to be like, hey, would you like to see that in black? No! <laughs> How do they not have self-checkout at the sex shop? <laughs> they have it at Walmart. I'm not embarrassed to buy broccoli. My wife and I like to role play in the bedroom. We like to like reenact our favorite uh, sexy scenes from our favorite movies. My favorite scene for her to reenact is that scene from Pretty Woman. You know, the one where she's sitting on the piano wearing nothing but a tie, except we don't own a piano. We just have a keyboard and she just knocks it over. And it gets stuck on the laser beam button. Bam, bam. <laughs> Getting a little chubbed up. Thinking about it. <laughs> but her favorite movie for me to reenact is that scene from uh, E.T. You know, the one where uh, Elliot lays the Reese's down? To get E.T. to follow him into the bedroom. I just follow up behind her. <laughs> Is mama getting wet? <laughs> She's not. Guys, I'm Chris Bennett. Thank you so much. Have a great night. What's going on? Oh my God, it's so good to be here. This is exciting. Cause like, remember when you were younger, your mom would be like, don't do drugs, don't talk to strangers. And now here I am on drugs, talking to strangers. <laughs> I've learned the goddamn thing in 43 years. Like my dare officer would be so disappointed with me right now if he, uh, if he saw how I turned out. Remember that shit, the D.A.R.E. program? What a joke that was. <laughs> Nobody followed that shit. It was set up to fail. Like, even the title sounded like a challenge. <laughs> D.A.R.E. to hit this. Double D.A.R.E. me? Life's over. <laughs> With this nose, I would've made it past 12. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Welcome to Judaism, you know what I'm saying? Comes with the territory. <laughs> Nobody's learned their lesson, though. Some of you guys might Uber or Lyft at some point in your life. You know, get in the car with a stranger <laughs> who probably has candy. <laughs> you know, everything we were taught not to do as kids, now we pay to do that shit every day. <laughs> There's an app you can just download, just have the kidnappers come right to your house. <laughs> Bring your own puppy. <laughs> it's crazy. Technology's getting too advanced. It's amazing. Like, we're all, we love our phones, but like, I still kind of miss my beeper. <laughs> Remember how cool beepers were? Like, some of the people will never know how cool it was to have a beeper, to have a fucking pizza box clipped to your belt all goddamn day. <laughs> how important you felt when that shit went off. You're like, yo, hold up. Yo, it's my girl, bro. <laughs> One, four, three, speak secret code. It's really just your mom. You're just trying to act cool in front of your friends. Let me find a payphone, call this bitch back. <laughs> so clingy, God. Suck on her tits once, right?
It was more than one. It was like seven months or something. <laughs> oh my God. Now everything's different. Everything is changing now. Women, that's another technological advancement I wasn't ready for. Women are beautiful nowadays. Like, they didn't look like that back in the day. <laughs> Not even close. Everybody just looked like Ben Franklin back in the day. <laughs> like man or woman, it didn't matter. They all had fucking pantsuits and mullets. <laughs> monocles, you can't bang a chick with a monocle. That's disgusting. <laughs> How does that even work? It gets all foggy on one side. <laughs> Ear, 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 No, <laughs> oh, they're so pretty now. Like, they're so hot. Like, there are students having sex with their teachers now. Like, that was never a choice when I was in school. <laughs> that was never on my syllabus growing up. I went to school at the wrong time, man. It's not fair. They're amazing now. Every one of my teachers looked like a fucking Rottweiler, I swear to God. It was a nightmare. Like, you would think I went to school at, like, Petco and shit. None of those bitches were getting adopted. <laughs> it's an adoption joke, don't... Don't shop. It's cool. No, but remember, remember your teachers? Like, even if they were down, like, you weren't. <laughs> like, nah, I'd rather go to summer school. <laughs> Jerk off, I'm all set. Thanks, but no thanks, Mrs. Selsky. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's my second grade teacher on the wall. I just said her name on a taping, but... Uh, <laughs> She will see this joke. Uh, uh, we're Facebook friends. This is, uh, <laughs> she likes my shit up until now. Oh my God, I don't know why I would do that. That's what happens when you do drugs and talk to strangers. Shit just flies out of your face. Oh, willy-nilly. A sweet woman. She didn't deserve that at all. But, like, in my defense, though, she was very unfuckable, so I'm not wrong. <laughs> like, I'm not. Like, everybody after the show, follow me on Instagram. I'll send you the yearbook photo. <laughs> See if I'm being a dick or not. <laughs> Just saying, that's not a hot name. I don't want to out her. I ah, fuck it. Her name was Rona Selsky. That's not a hot name at all. <laughs> Like, that's not a name you can get behind. Picture that shit later when you guys are going at it. See how long you last. Get in there, fucking, ah, oh, Rona. That's my move. I just stick it all the way in and hold. I don't know if anyone's ever done that shit. Oh, it's incredible. Same result, less effort. Give it a shot, bro. It's fucking... Save some steps for tomorrow, come on. You gotta like commit though, you gotta like tilt the hamstrings, arch the back, get it all in there. But if done right, you could turn five into seven with that move, trust me, trust me. Seven and a half, if you like move an ass cheek and get in like a good angle and hook. Tiptoe. Try it though. Oh, it's incredible. I call it the crock pot. It tastes really interesting. I don't know. Seems appropriate. You, know, you just stick it in for like 30 minutes, let that shit marinate. And then the meat slides right off the bone. It's absolutely perfect for sex, or pulled pork, whatever. Maybe both. I get hungry after. <laughs> oh, man. All right. A lot of sex talk tonight. I think we need to switch it up a little bit, make it more relatable. Some just might. Uh, so porn is so accessible nowadays, right? <laughs> Take a little bit of a hard right. I got a love-hate relationship with porn now. Like, porn, to, it's the, the best it's ever been. Like, it's amazing. You can just whip out your phone, type in anything you want, whatever sick fetish you have comes up. It's remarkable. 
But like, I also hate it for like the exact same reason. Like, it's too easy. And maybe I'm just bitter and old. But like the younger generation, they've had everything like handed to them. So like, they don't know about struggle porn and shit like that. Like the shit we have to go through. Like, you have no idea. Your struggle porn is like, oh, the Wi-Fi is buffering. What am I gonna do? I gotta just stare at this tit. It wasn't like that for us. We had to like hunt down our dad's VHS tape when he went to work. Remember that? It was like hidden under the floorboards or behind the staircase, like Anne Frank. <laughs> and then when you were done watching it, you had to rewind it back to the spot where he came. <laughs> that struggle porn. You'd have to rewind it back or else your dad would find out and he would beat the shit out of you with the same hand he just jerked off with. <laughs> You'll learn your lesson real quick. You ever get slapped in the face and the hand sticks there for a second? <laughs> like glue? <laughs> Although I just balled it up, that's weird. That seems like a weird. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm fucking. It's been a long night for all of us. What's the fucking? I just came out in front of you guys. Who cares? It's a difference. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you guys are laughing at like stupid shit because you don't know what you're allowed to do or say anymore. Like the whole world's gone full bitch. Like it's really sad. Like what happened to? Like, you can't do or say anything anymore without getting canceled. They're canceling everything. Fucking Aunt Jemima's out of a job. Like, what happened? <laughs> what is going on? They're canceling everything. Candy. They canceled the green M&M not too long ago because they said she looked like she was too much of a whore. <laughs> this is the world that we're living in now when people give a shit what Candy's wearing. Because if you ever saw the commercial prior to the canceling, she had flesh-colored legs and she wore boots. So obviously, she's a whore. <laughs> There's no other explanation for it. Maybe she's trying to look nice and professional. Nah, she's a whore. <laughs> Didn't think anyone who wears boots is a whore, evidently. Nice boots, by the way. We got a whore in the front row. <laughs> We got two whores right next to each other. Any whores in the back? Can we get the camera show all the whores walking out after the show? Like, how stupid does that sound? It's ridiculous. You can't cancel candy. Like, even if she was a whore. Like, so what? Why are we shaming her for that? She's a single, independent woman. She doesn't have any little Eminem minis running around she's got to worry about. She wants to go out and get butterfingered by the Three Musketeers. Why are you shaming her? That's not... Turn all the twicks you want, girl. They're just going to keep coming after all the candy, so just get ready, because it gets worse every day. Like, like, with all the gender pronouns going around, pretty soon Hershey's will become them days. You guys ready for that shit? It's like the only candy bar with nuts on one side. You don't know which side to bite. I bit it, now I'm gay. I want to make s'mores. S'more dick? I don't know. That doesn't help my case from earlier, bro. That doesn't at all. Oh my God. You guys remember the whatchamacallit? Yeah, pretty soon they'll cancel that one because it sounds transphobic. <laughs> I don't need everybody to laugh at that joke. I know how good it is. You're just afraid to laugh in public and get judged by the person next to you. Or you haven't gotten it yet. But e either way, on the way home, that is gonna bust you up, I promise. I don't care what side of the fence you're on. If next time you go to the store and you see a whatchamacallit, you're gonna laugh for the rest of your life. All of you. Like, God forbid you ever see a trans girl eating a whatchamacallit, your head will explode on impact. 
Like, holy shit, cannibalism. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll cancel the Klondike for obvious reasons. <laughs> Can't have anything nice anymore. Like, where does it end? I heard they want to redo the Snicker bar. Did you guys hear that shit? Do you want to remove the Snicker bar dick vein that it has on it? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know when you open up a Snicker bar, it's got that big throbbing giant? <laughs> it looks like you're watching BBC porn. <laughs> it's a very vascular candy bar, if you've never noticed. That's what they call it, Big Snick Energy. Is that what that shit is? There's a reason why Snickers satisfies. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You guys have been amazing tonight. Thank you guys for coming out. Oh, it's glad the Super Bowl's out of Vegas. Not gonna lie, I'm happy about it. Happy about it. I'm just sick of people saying that I look like Walmart Joe Burrow. It really pisses me off. And they don't actually say that to my face, but it's like when they say it to me, like I know what they're talking about, you know? Like I get it, he's a good looking guy, but I had a woman the other day come up to me and she's like, oh my God, Joe Burrow? Oh my God, Joe Burrow? You're Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow? And I'm like, ma'am, we're flying Frontier Airlines right now. I'm in row 36, middle seat. Calm the fuck down. I know he lives in Ohio, but how bad do you think he's doing right now? <laughs> I just got cranky old man energy. I love it, man. I'm 36 years old. I wish I was 86. I'm transgenerational. Those are my pronouns, you know? <laughs> I just wish I could do old man shit, right? Like read a map, drive a Buick, right? Jerk off to the Gettysburg Address. I don't know. <laughs> You know, sir, four score, seven years ago. And I'm proud to be an American. At least I know I'm free. It's what I imagine you guys do. I don't know. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it's like, mmm, fixed rate mortgages. Mmm. Mmm. I'm an old man, I got old man tendencies, you know? Like I hate censorship, but I complain about censorship. I don't like it, you know? Like I watch YouTube videos things now, right? They can't say kill or die, they gotta say unalive, ooh, right? <laughs> they used to do this a lot on TV, you'd watch a movie on television, it'd be rated R, they have to censor out all the curse words with stuff like a fourth grader would say. You know, you're cozy up, watching some movies, Denzel Washington in training days running up to people saying goofy stuff like, go fruit yourself, you side of a biscuit. <laughs> And I'm like, am I high? When does he order off the Denny's menu? I don't remember this part. <laughs> but sometimes the censorship actually makes what they're trying to say worse, case in point. I was watching one of my favorite movies the other day on the TNT network, Casino, with Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, yes. It's fantastic, it's vulgar, it's violent, and you can't censor out Joe Pesci. No, it turns to Home Alone, totally different movie, okay? <laughs> But there's a real scene in the uncensored version where Joe Pesci walks up to Robert De Niro, very intensely points him in the face, says the very real line, don't you go over my head, you Jew motherfucker. <laughs> Great impression, real line, I promise. <laughs> Obviously, if you're watching it at four o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday on the TNT network, you can't say that. It's a little vulgar, it's a little racist, so they gotta censor it out. However, this is how they decided to censor it out to be. Don't you go over my head, you Jew money lover. <laughs> Guys, that is way worse than the original version. <laughs> By my calculations, that's like six million times worse than the original version. <laughs> Who do they got working over at TNT? Hamas and Kanye? What? <laughs> right? I don't know who made that decision, but they sound like a real racist grass hole to me. You know what I'm saying, guys? saying it's that grumpy old man energy in me man i watch you old men walk around so calm got time to judge everything just angry i watch it hands in pockets when you walk in every room inspect it from top to bottom just <laughs> ceiling's too high i don't like that now <laughs> wires over there that's a fire hazard shit I guess I'll sit here for two hours. Maybe I'll fall asleep in a nice chair. I don't know. 
such a calming energy. I wish I had that, but I'm a millennial, so my brain's all over the place. My mind's like a dog that can't get home. We're locked outside forever. We're just stressed out. Even something like going to work, very stressful situation for us. <laughs> It's not an easy thing. Every conversation's like, all right, 15 minutes to get to work? Okay, it takes me 15 minutes to get there. I should be okay. <laughs> Fuck, where are my car keys? I don't know where my car keys are. Okay, I normally leave them on the washing machine. They're not there. Okay, they're not on the dresser. They're not on the... Uh, oh, oh, here they are on the floor. Okay, eight minutes to get to work. That's not a big deal. I'll get their cell phone. How the fuck am I getting to work without my cell phone? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, it's, oh, it's on my charger. 26%? That's gonna have to do... <gasps> Holy shit, three minutes to get to work. I'm totally gonna get fired. <gasps> I'm gonna take a mental health day today. I think that's... <laughs> it's been a rough 15 minutes after 2 p.m. I think I've... I think I've earned that today. I hate being me, we're stressed out, you know? You olds, you guys are resourceful. Oh my God, you guys have so much knowledge. You know more than we think you know. I found this out the hard way. Picked my mom up from the airport. We're gonna take her to lunch. Put the radio on. We're singing, we're having a great time. Bruno Mars pops on the radio. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> Cardi B jumps on the track halfway through. <laughs> Derailed the whole fucking car ride right from there. Cause she has this lyric and I totally forgot my mom was sitting next to me. She has this lyric and I just belted it out. I was in the moment and the lyric was, your pussy's basura, my pussy's horchata. <laughs> That is a real Cardi B lyric that I shouted out with my sweet Jewish mother sitting in the passenger seat. I noticed immediately, I was like, I hope she didn't hear it, but moms, they hear everything. She turned, she looked at me horrified. She's like, oh my God, what was that? You repeated that? That's awful, that's disgusting, that's vulgar. I don't even know what it means. Can you translate what those lyrics mean? <laughs> This is where I fucked up, okay? <laughs> I'm a good millennial son. I wanted to explain it to my mom, but I panicked. And the best I could come up with was, Mom, Cardi B's saying that this other girl's no-no parts, her private areas, it's gross. It's disgusting. It's basura, Spanish for trash. I know that from Spanish 101, don't worry. <laughs> and instead, the guy should get with Cardi B because her no-no parts, her private areas, drip a white, creamy, sticky liquid <laughs> like a horchata machine is that what she's fucking talking about on the radio <laughs> this is why i love you olds because i'm pretty sure my mom set me up from jump because <laughs> i turned horrified after what i just said i looked at her in the passenger seat she had the biggest smile on her face and she looked at me with that grin and she was like, ooh, it sounds like Cardi B could use some Monostat 3. Oh, grrr. I'm like, damn, mom, I didn't know you were a gangster, Jew money lover. Where the fuck did you learn how to do that? Holy shit. My mom's wild. She's a crazy old, right? She's an old she keeps with the times, but then like other things on the time she can't get on board with. Like my cousin came out as a lesbian during Thanksgiving dinner. My mom couldn't figure that shit out. <laughs> couldn't do it. She came up to me and my wife and she was like, oh my God, did you hear about Courtney? I was like, yeah, I was sitting at the table. We all heard. <laughs> She's like, you're not surprised? What, did she tell you? Did you know something that I didn't know? Did she tell you? I'm like, mom, she didn't have to tell me. She made her men's varsity basketball team when she was a freshman in high school. <laughs> I figured it the fuck out. She talked about how good she was boxing out on and off the court. I put two to two together. Then my mom said something wild. She's like, oh my God, do you think that's why she got a DWI? Mom, what do you think DWI stands for? Dating women instead? I don't comprehend. What do you think cops are doing? Pulling people over? Breathalyzing them for too much woman on their breath? You better hope not, because I'm going to fucking jail. <laughs> I'm driving drunk on that pussy, mom. Just don't ask any questions. <laughs> I did say I was married, right? That's fun, right? Everybody has a type. My type's feisty. I like feisty women. Sexy, right? People like, like grumpy, like Karen's. Nah, just feisty. Feisty women are hot because they like, 
they won't fuck around. They'll just go up to anyone in public and they'll let you know how they feel. They don't care about the repercussions. <laughs> like my wife, she goes up to people in the grocery store and she'll yell at them if they don't have the appropriate amount of items in the 10 item or less line. She'll walk right up and count those motherfuckers out loud to their face. She'll be like, oh my God, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11. Oh, I didn't realize this was the 11 item or less line. <laughs> Look, I don't know why the fuck we're standing in line. If no one else is following the rules, I don't think we should follow the fucking rules either, all right? You know I hate coming to this store, by the way. You know I hate it. I'd rather go to the ones across the street where there was more self-checkouts. Now we're stuck at this stupid store behind this dumb bitch that can't fucking count. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, you need to stop. People are staring at us, we're in public. She's like, why, am I embarrassing you? And I'm like, no, I'm hard as fuck about to tear through my jeans. <laughs> yeah. Calm your tits before I come on them, lady, all right? <laughs> Little psycho, fuck. It's hot, right? She's an Italian woman. She's like, I'm feisty, because I'm Italian. All right, you can't win an argument with an Italian woman. I've tried. You always think you're the favorite. You always go in with a good plan. You might be winning in the first half. You never succeed, right? Essentially, arguing with an Italian woman's like playing the Super Bowl as a San Francisco 49ers, you know? <laughs> you get into the fourth quarter thinking you're doing okay, and then all of a sudden you're like, we fucking lost again? I had control of this shit. Fire the coach. <sighs> Some of you guys felt that in your soul, all right? Some of you guys felt that. One of our biggest arguments, and I don't like it, and I spring this up and I complain about it because my wife's not full Italian. She's not, she's 50%, which is bullshit because I'm 100% banned from my favorite Italian restaurant. <laughs> Olive Garden. <laughs> okay, people judge, right? And I don't think they should judge. I think it's very Italian, she does not. She always yells at me, she's like, it's not authentic Italian food. Well, relax. But I cheat, right? I door dash it, I get high. Try to wolf it down before she gets home. Make sure there's no evidence, no Parmesan cheese on the pants, right? No marinara sauce on the collar, smooth. But one day she caught me, busted me, red-handed, right? Literally, I was hands deep in it, fucking woofing it down. She comes home like an angry Joe Pesci if he fucked a Furby. <laughs> I'm like, what's the matter with you, Sarah? What's going on? She's like, oh my God, Olive Garden? Really? That's not authentic Italian food. How are you eating that shit? And I was like, Sarah, you're not authentic Italian. And I eat you every single day. Never had an issue before. <laughs> Didn't hear any complaints when I was twirling that clit like pasta for all right? <laughs> Heard silence when you were getting bottomless breadsticks, all right? <laughs> I'm not married anymore, by the way, guys, I'm not. <laughs> no. I'm actually a widower, it's a real thing. It's, I, uh, okay, well, that, that's a weird thing. If I came out in a wheelchair, would you guys go, aww? No, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the sentiment, I do, guys, it's cool. People don't know how to act around me when I talk about it, I get it, it's a hard subject to talk about, it's a weird subject to talk about. If my old roommate had a real hard time with it, he would try to like do the appropriate things and would put me in like very uncomfortable situations by doing it. Right, like we were watching a movie once. 10 minutes into the movie, the main character's wife passed away. Yeah, and then he shut the fucking movie off. <laughs> For 38 minutes in dead silence with snacks that nobody wanted. It was the worst afternoon on the planet. Look, I know why he did it, okay? I get it. He's trying to look out for me. I understand that. However, it's been a few years. I'm going to have some fun now, okay? And that's exactly what I did. I'm gonna ask questions. I go, hey, John, like, what's the deal with that? I thought we were watching the movie. Is there something wrong with the TV? Can you pop it back on? He goes, yeah, I panicked. I saw that the main character's wife passed away and I didn't know what you were about to do. I'm like, we're watching John Wick. What the fuck did you think I was about to do? <laughs> think I was gonna become a sleeper cell assassin, start murdering Russian terrorists? Come on, man, there's five movies. If anyone should see the rest of this shit, it should be me. I need to know what widowers can do with all the free time. <laughs> oh, I love it. 
I try to date again. I try to get on the apps. People weren't ready for that. My friends, my millennial friends, instead of just giving me good advice, they try to like coddle me and it made it uncomfortable. Like my friend Brian, good looking dude. I'm like, hey man, I'm trying to get back on the apps again. What are the pros of dating? What are the cons? Help me out. He looks at me panicked. He wasn't expecting this question today. And instead of just being honest with me, he tried to coddle me. And he goes, to be honest with you, bro, you should just stay single. It's like, you don't want to deal with any of this shit anymore. He's like, I went on a date with a girl the other day and then she just totally ghosted me. And I look at him and I'm like, yes, I have no idea what being ghosted feels like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up. You just sound like my haunted apartment. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. And by the way, guys, just because somebody doesn't text you back or doesn't show up to a date doesn't mean you're ghosted. That's my fucking word. I'm taking that shit back. I'm ghosted, okay? Because if you guys wanted to text someone who didn't text you back, you can. You can pick up your phone and do that. To text my ex, I gotta pull the Ouija board off the shelf, all right? I can't send dick pics anymore. I can't do it that easily. I gotta unravel it on the board. Trace it with the magnifying glass. Send me a picture of your ass and the board flips over. It's crazy. So I'm just saying, guys, ghosted is my word, okay? I shouldn't have to say my wife passed. You know what, friend? Instead of her texting you back, bitch, she passed on you. She passed. <laughs> that was an interesting noise. I like that. I'm dating again now, though. I'm dating a wonderful woman. She's cool. She's awesome. Right? And people always ask, they're like, you guys gonna get married? No. <laughs> and they're like, why? I'm like, I don't fucking know, I don't want to. They're like, why don't you want to? Are you afraid you're gonna get hurt again? I'm afraid, I'm gonna be honest, but I'm not afraid that I'm gonna get hurt again. That's silly, no. I'm afraid for a simple reason, and the reason is, one dead wife, you get sympathy. The second dead wife, you're the fucking suspect every single time. Some of you guys haven't been laughing because you're like, wait a second, let's hear how she died first, all right? You're like, don't do this to us. First OJ, now Joe Burrow. We can't handle this shit. And I've been Spiro, guys. Thank you so much.